let's look at another vector valued function and hopefully it's obvious from the algebra that we see that this probably is not a linear function it's probably a curve of some kind so we're going to approach it as if we've never met it before and let's see what it looks like now when we plot points we're going to um, skip some of the minor values of input t and I'm going to guide you in a more direct route to our, our final destination here. Um, if t is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, but the sine of 0 is 0, and I'm now going to write these pairs of numbers as coordinates because that's how we are plotting them. If t is pi divided by 2, then the cosine would be 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, 1 times 5 is 5. Now I'm going to bring in my graph paper. Look, made some improvements. Maybe you can even see it now. 2, 0, 0, 5. All right, if t is pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, that will be negative 2, but sine of pi is 0, so negative 2, 0 is right here. It's almost like an upside down or opening down parabola. If t is 3 pi over 2, cosine of that happens to be 0, and the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, that'll be negative 5, and hold on a second. 0, negative 5 is here. This is no parabola anymore. I got 1, 2, 3, 4 dots laid out, in a, laid out in kind of a diamond pattern. And 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi is, oh, that's it's going to be the same as the first point, 2, 0. So we start here, and we end here. So what I'm going to do is show you that this is an ellipse. Not just because I'm going to connect the dots and it almost looks like an ellipse. And we can see that it goes this direction. I don't need to have four arrows showing the direction. I just need at least one that shows the clear direction of this elliptical path. So. Let me see if I can prove it's an ellipse. And we'll come back up and do some interesting things here. Ellipse. So we have x equals 2 cosine of t. So y equals 5 sine of t. And if I divide by 2 here, I get x over 2 is cosine of t. And y divided by 5 is sine of t and I have learned that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1, a very powerful and commonly used trigonometric identity. So if I have cosine squared that would be x squared over 4 and sine squared would be y squared over 25 and that adds up to 1 and yep that is an ellipse that is an ellipse. The difference is this algebra is only the ellipse itself. This vector valued function is actually the point that moves around the ellipse. This is like you and your vehicle driving somewhere. And this is like the road that you're driving on. The road doesn't move itself. The road is just the road. Now, what did we just learn about? Oh uh, yes, first derivative, otherwise known as the velocity vector. Well, let's see, negative 2 
sine of t and derivative of sine is cosine, so 5 cosine. And if I were to want to calculate the velocity vector at pi over 2, pi over 2 is at the point 0, 5 on the graph. And that would be right here, at the top of the graph. And the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's actually a negative 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And let's use the black pen here to do that for those of you that can see this video in color. And this is going to be the vector that starts here and goes two units to the left. There is velocity at the top. From this point, two units left. If I drew my picture better, you'd recognize this as the tangent line. But more specifically, as I go around the ellipse, if I lost traction here, I'd be going to directly to the left two units at a time. One more calculation here. The second derivative. which is acceleration would be the derivative of this and that's going to be negative 2 cosine of t negative 5 sine of t those are the derivatives of the components and if I were curious and wanted to see what this was equal to at the value pi over 2 Let's see, acceleration, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, and aha! At this point, my acceleration is downwards, 5 units, happens to be pointing to the center here, and its magnitude is exactly 5, which is the length of the ellipse. This is the acceleration vector at that particular time. I think you will find that if you use different values of t that your velocity acceleration vectors will definitely look different. Now, let's do a quick little transition to another format before we end this segment. All right, so we had the parabola we had looked at in the first two segments, and I just want to give you a quick little glimpse at it before we do anything else. So the red graph would be the parabola itself, but that moving point, the animated point, is really the vector value function itself as t goes from 0 and beyond. So it resets to 0. If you recall, at one point in time, that, that graph was at the started at the point 1, 2, not from this segment though. I just wanted to show you a little peek. So here's the ellipse that we were just looking at. So the ellipse itself is the path, but the moving point is really what the vector value function is all about. So it's really difficult to draw something that's moving on your paper unless you're in some sort of a fantasy uh, related series uh, or science fiction. So for hand drawing on paper, we just use the arrow to represent our final graph. All right. In the next segment, I'll do a little bit of cleanup on why we can do the derivative the way we do it. Until then.